First things first, I'm Saris, an architect who designs the built-in ships for the game and a veteran player. I want to dispel some rumors and misconceptions about the Meltdown update. The game has not fundamentally changed, the foundation remains the same. The ships that predate the update continue to function as normal, which you can see here. Using heat and overclocks is entirely voluntary. If the system doesn't appeal to you, nothing forces you to use it. I will be using the space model of an overclocked capacitor because it constantly generates heat based on all of the excess batteries it's storing. I won't go over every new overclock, but the capacitor will store three times as much energy, and when crew pick them up, we'll pick up larger batteries like this one that would be distributed by a larger reactor. Moving on, heat is the new resource to Cosmeteer. This update is about managing it and figuring out how to set up logistics to remove it from your ship. Overclocked parts and the thermal lamps both generate heat, which can be stored and removed from your ship with a radiator, or if you use the new thermal canister missiles, weaponized and removed by launching it as a projectile. As you can see here, every single one of the thermal parts can channel heat, same as pipes. Nothing else in the game can do this. Because of this, you can also chain them together like this, and it remains a valid pipe system. The way that you can overclock parts is that you need to connect a heat pipe to a door location. These orange points represent where you could connect a pipe if you wanted to. Because thermal parts have passed through, they have interesting properties when overclocking other nearby regular parts. This is the rule for every single regular part. I stress regular parts. Thermal parts don't care about doors, only the active system, which is shown by these orange lines on the part itself. Because of that, despite the connection to the thermal part via a door, these lasers will still overheat but the ones connected to the orange lines don't. When I connect a pipe, it highlights all the connected systems, but not the outer blasters, which is why they burn down. The last of the main thermal parts is the heat exchanger, which takes heat out of nearby systems and pulls it into a pipe system. On the right, the capacitor and blaster are clearly disconnected, but aren't burning because of the nearby heat exchanger. However, they have a few quirks and downsides that prevent them from always being used in this way. As an example, look here. Both of these capacitors are connected by pipe and the system is fine, but when I disconnect the pipe and have the heat exchangers process, they burn up because they're inefficient. They add 40% more heat, and two capacitors that are giving 40% more heat overwhelms the single radiator. So they can be very powerful tools and more cost efficient than pipes, but it's a trade-off of running hotter. Lastly, I'll briefly cover the Thermal Lance. The Thermal Lance applies heat to parts it hits, burning through armor and blocks alike. The Thermal Lance has two stats that you can modify, signified by these two, Dilation and Amplification. By increasing Dilation, you increase the area affected, and by increasing Amplification, you increase the amount of heat being applied. The left one is clearly burning a larger swath through the armor, but it did it more slowly than the right one.
Now if we repair the firing subject, we can see the effects that the heat has. As we just saw, it can obviously kill parts by itself, but it also causes hot parts to take greater damage and to have lower penetration resistance, which both directly scale with the level of heat. Let's see what happens when the lances fire in tandem and with the cannons. The Thermal Lance also has interesting properties when it hits shields. The Thermal Lance, instead of dealing damage, causes the shields to catch on fire, eventually burning through it, but this takes some amount of time. Heat exchangers are very good for dealing with this and putting the heat back into the system, and I recommend this when fighting thermal lances or when using overclocked shields. Now if you look at the shield on the right, the lasers can't get through it. When I apply the heavily dilated thermal lance, they can get through it a lot more easily. Thermal lances affect shields in another way by applying a debuff. This debuff increases the amount of damage that they take, making it easier to take them down if you have other supporting weapons. To increase this effect, you can invest in dilation pumps so that the shields take more damage. I won't get into what each overclock does, as I want to leave that for players to explore and discover. I will, however, share some galaxy generation seeds that spawn the players nearby to the new faction, the Great House Io. The Great House Io heavily uses overclocks in the new thermal system. As a closing statement, I want to invite you, dear viewer, to the Tide Pool. It's a place where players of Cosmeteer can congregate that is subject to stricter rules. I regularly stream ship construction, where you can watch me make more built-ins for the game, and we have casual PvP and can offer ship advice when requested. Come join, catch a stream, join call, and have a fun time. And with that, I hope you have a wonderful day.